Again, I think it's so important, this idea of A, just being out in nature. And I know Richard Louv does a lot of talk about um, vitamin N and how important nature is for our social emotional development, our gross motor development, our fine motor development, our social skills. But sitting still is really hard for young kids. And so part of the picture book, and actually now that I'm, I've teamed up with a publisher to write a teacher's guide for the book, it's about how to make this playful for kids. So let's go make a game. Let's go play hide and seek. And then all of a sudden my three-year-old is down low in the ferns, trying to hide from me, he has to sit still. Oh, now I found him and we can play that for ever. And he doesn't know that that's a sit spot while he's hiding. That is his version of a sit spot. So I don't necessarily call it a sit spot with my three-year-old, but it's still getting used to this routine of it's okay to get dirty. It's okay to be down in the mud. It's just fun. Hello, people of the world, specifically people in beautiful British Columbia. I have borrowed one of your famous authors today for our podcast. So thank you to the province of BC for sharing Lauren McLean with me today. Lauren, how are you? I, I You look and sound happy. Everything's good, right? Everything is fantastic. I am coming to you from Port Moody in BC and it we have the beautiful sun out today with just enough cloud cover to make me comfortable. <laughs> well, see, so this weather report brought to you by Living the Next Chapter. <laughs> and okay, so Port Moody, how big is Port Moody? Yeah, we're quite a small town. Uh, we okay. just circle around one of the arms of the Burrard Inlet, which flows into the Pacific Ocean. That sounds really boring. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's not beautiful <laughs> at all. Oh We've gosh. got the water. I live up on a mountainside. So okay. Okay. Well, Lauren, we're going to stop this podcast because you're just bragging now about how <laughs> wonderful your life is. <laughs> I'm sure that you've never had hiccups in your life. Everything is perfect every day, right? Absolutely. I mean, 100%. I can tell you what we just finished getting over in our household. Okay, well, let's give them a little a little uh, <laughs> behind the scenes, Lauren. What's been going on? Well, the start of our summer, I mean, as we said, everybody's sort of still in the middle, hopefully the end of this pandemic. Yep. We're outside enjoying nature. We can go out now. We can, we're not, oh. there's no stay at home orders. Everything's no. great, right? Go enjoy back to normal. Yes. And then our household and many households down here, unfortunately, in the daycare system has been hit with hand, foot and mouth disease. So we've been stuck inside for the last week and a half. We all have blisters on our hands. Hmm. They're itchy. Our poor, I've got a year and a half year old little girl and a three year old boy. Oh and we're a little unhappy at the moment. <laughs> wow. But okay. But you're getting through this and moving forward. And we have, yeah, we're over the contagious period. We've been outside now because uh, everybody's uh, blisters and rashes have all healed. So we've been outside for the last few days and just feel so much more refreshed. So I don't know, like Lauren, I think if I, if I just came through this, I don't know if I would be quite as happy and perky and all of that, I would probably be, be exhausted. And if you're exhausted and hiding it, you're doing a wonderful job, by the way. I, I definitely am exhausted, okay. but I think it's this renewed sense of freedom. Oh my goodness, we can go outside. We can go to the stream and throw rocks in. We can go see our neighbors and not be worried that we're yeah. contagious anymore. So we're just so enthusiastic. Right? Well, I'm happy Still for you lining. and the kids. Happy for you and the kids that you guys oh, made sure. it through. Um. But yeah, thank you so much for making time today as well. Oh, of course. It's wonderful to connect with you. Yeah. So we talked like a little while ago and kind of had like a little pre-interview chat. Mm -hmm. And what I have written on my page in front of me here for you, Lauren, I like to always kind of let people know I have highlighted the word fun. You are a fun guest already. I have that written down. So we're going to have a fun time today. So I think okay with that? Well, it's a good energy. I like right. it. 
All right. Okay. So let's tell people a little bit more about your author journey. Uh, you have a podcast and you're a teacher, lots of great stuff. Let's fill people in on where we are at. And so people have a little sense of you and then we'll move into the book and talk about that a little bit. Wonderful. Yes. As I said, I am, I am a teacher. I'm, I came into teaching a bit later than I would say the average Joe, because my former life was as a national field hockey player. So I played field hockey for Canada. Wait a minute. Really? Yeah. I don't have that in my notes. Oh, you know, I don't often bring it up. I know. I don't know why, but I think because it feels like it was so long ago. (laughs) Come on. Yeah. But it was that sort of started or really nurtured my belief in doing things as a team, as a group, working together, this whole idea of mentoring. Uh, it's its such a huge aspect of team sports. Wow. So once I left field hockey because of two knee surgeries, Ouch. Went, Ouch. yeah, painful, went into teaching, just loved it because it was very similar to coaching, which I also loved. And I was very lucky to be mentored by amazing teachers Catherine Ludwig, Janice Novikowski, that sort of took me under their wing and nurtured me. Because mm. I think we can often feel very lost when we start teaching. We're in our own little classroom. It's easy to lock the door and not reach out for help. And I'm very open with mm. saying, I don't know how to do this. Who can help me? Yikes. Mm. Something didn't work well. Who can help me problem solve it? And so years go on. I'm loving teaching. Then the pandemic hits and I'm on my first mat leave. So I'm bored. I'm desperate for adult interactions. And so I started the podcast. That was sort of my way of saying, come talk to me, people. (laughs) And so I'm interviewing people from all over North America. Well, actually now down in Australia as well. Educators, families that are passionate about learning and playing and teaching out in nature. How can we do it in different contexts? What are your struggles? How how do you overcome those struggles? And it's been fantastic. I go back to teaching after mat leave. Boom. I'm on another mat leave. (laughs) I'm still (laughs) in the middle of a pandemic. So I think, well, what's my next little journey going to be? Because I'm locked indoors. I'm not seeing grandparents. We're not seeing neighbors. I'm going to fulfill my next dream. I want to be a children's author. And so again, I take my experience working at a nature school, being a teacher, loving the outdoors and being connected with myself and the place that we live on. And Mm -hmm. so I wrote the book called Me and My Sit Spot, which is all about this nature routine of finding somewhere outside that I visit as often as possible in different weather different seasons, different times of day. I observe, I use my senses, and I just get to know the land a lot better. So the term sit spot, is that something, is that something unique? Or is that something that's been around? Like I'm, I'm learning about this, listening to you. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a really good question. It's not something that I coined. Mm -hmm. I learned it from uh, the Wilderness Awareness School founder, whose name is John Young. And he wrote the book, Uh, coyote's guide to connecting with nature Mm -hmm. and he has so many beautiful nature routines so sit spot is one wandering or nature walks is another mapping journaling bird language animal forms he has so many amazing ways to connect with nature and sit spot is just one that I just was really gravitated towards. And I think it's because it's difficult for me. (laughs) Mm. I have a lot of energy. I don't sit still very well or for very long. My mind races. I'm always thinking of something else. And so this was sort of my way of really tapping into something that is underdeveloped in myself. That's interesting. Yeah, I need to slow down. It's really important for me. And I notice how much calmer I am when I do focus on it. I notice how it improves um, my relationship with myself, with my kids, even with my dog, when I'm out there and we're sitting down (laughs) in our sit spot, even she comes up and snuggles up beside me. Yeah. So we have a couple dogs too, and you can tell when they're at peace 
and right. safe and they just relax yeah right and it's like wow i would love to feel that sometimes i'm so busy right doing life whatever right and just that huh, feeling right. right that big yeah. sigh and yeah i'm good you know that's yeah. that's a great feeling it's really, a really wonderful good. feeling and i always come back to this quote by john muir that i'm gonna botch it but mm. in essence it says out of all the paths you take in life make sure a few of them are dirt I love that. I want to get dirty. I want to be out there quiet because life is so busy and it's so noisy. And so if I can take a little time every day to just be quiet and still, it's really interesting to see where our mind takes us. And so tying that into children's world, mm -hmm. how important is sit spot for kids? It Again, I think it's so important, this idea of a, just being out in nature, and I know Richard Louvre does a lot of talk about um, vitamin N and how important nature is for our social emotional development, our gross motor development, our fine motor development, our social skills. But sitting still is really hard for young kids. Mm -hmm. And so part of the picture book, and actually now that I'm, I've teamed up with a publisher to write a teacher's guide for the book, it's about how to make this playful for kids. So let's go make a game. Yeah. Let's go play hide and seek. And then all of a sudden my three-year-old is down low in the ferns, trying to hide from me, he has to sit still. Oh, now I found him and we can play that for ever. <laughs> and he doesn't yeah. know that that's a sit spot while mm -hmm. he's hiding. That is his version of a sit spot. So I don't necessarily call it a sit spot with my three-year-old, but it's still getting used to this routine of it's okay to get dirty. It's okay to be down in the mud. It's just fun. So we have a world of kids that can't wait to get their hands on these little things. Right. And sit here and do this all day. Mm -hmm. While mom is talking to me and I'm just right. How yeah. does, how do we, how do we get away from this with our kids? and as adults as well and find our space somewhere yeah. outside like that yeah it's important and right it's so important and i think it is us as you said it's us modeling right so i'm putting my phone away i really want some fresh air i want to go run around i want to go be noisy outdoors and so we go outside with our kids and we model that playfulness we model the fact that we are focused on touching the bark of the tree to notice how deep the grooves are. Wow, that's a really groovy <laughs> tree. I feel that that's probably not a cedar tree. I think this is probably a big grand fir tree. Let's go look for more of a stripy tree. Let's go feel what that's like. And we're yeah. down at the same level as our kids. They pick up on that energy. They notice what we're noticing. They notice if we're happy, if we're excited, if I'm nervous about touching something. Most likely my three-year-old's not going to be touching it either. Mm -hmm. But if I say, that's okay, you don't have to touch it, but I'm going to go up close and I'm going to touch the millipede gently. And I'm going to smell how that millipede smells like marzipan. That's so cool. Right. And there's all this fun exploration yeah. when we're out there away from our phones. Now, sometimes Grayson asks amazing questions for a three-year-old. What's this? And I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. And again, I can model saying, I don't know, but I know how to look up. I, if it's a flower, let's look at the color of the petals. Let's count. Uh, let's count how many petals there are. Let's look to see if the leaves are growing in a pattern, like an alternating pattern or an opposite pattern. And then maybe if we still can't figure it out, I'll pull out my phone. We'll take a picture. We'll look it up on a seek app or yeah. iNaturalist, we look at it, we figure it out, then we put it away and we keep exploring. So it's not that I'm avoiding tech always, yeah. but I am trying to model it for most of our outside time. See, that's a lot of fun. So do your kids look forward to, to these experiences and going out and doing this? Is it kind of like a, you're dragging them out into the forest to go, let's have a fun time? Or are they like, let's go, let's go, let's go. They're constantly, let's go, let's go That's look good. for the bugs. Let's look for the slugs. 
we actually have a difficult time getting them back in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is dinner time. And so sometimes we take funny videos of my, my husband will take a video of me going outside saying, okay, we've got two more minutes and then we have to go have dinner. And the both of them go, no, <laughs> it's quite comical. All right. Yeah. Then we'll eat outside or we'll just wait till we're starving. And then you'll, then you'll really want to come inside yeah. to eat. Wow. Uh, so it's, it's a really nice routine that at the end of the day, when I'm done work or I pick them up from daycare or we're done nap time at home, the first thing they want to do is run outside. Now, again, where I'm living in Port Moody up on this mountain, we do have to have a lot of safety talks. <laughs> I'm going to be the first person to go out into the backyard just mm. in case there's a bear or a cougar or a bobcat. So there are things that we do need to be careful and it really depends on our context. We have a very strict, no touching mushrooms rule. We have a lot of poisonous ones out here and I'm not trying to make them scared, but we do need to work on our awareness and what are hazards just to keep ourselves safe. Interesting. Okay. So, um, so the, the book is designed for like preschool up to like grade six or seven, I think you were talking about. Right. Yeah. yeah. Elementary aged. Yeah. So is the book available within schools as well, or is this something that's only, you know, you have to purchase the book as well? Right. So I do have it available on my website, but the exciting thing is I've actually just sold out of my own personal copies. So it's that's fantastic. Amazing. It's, I, was very surprised at how quickly those copies sold. So now it's available online, like on Chapters Indigo or Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. And I'm sure I'll be getting more of my own copies once um, the shipping <laughs> is a bit faster from the States up to Canada, because yeah. I'm printing down, down in the States. And I have been surprised how many schools I have seen my book in nice that I, that I don't even have a personal connection with. So I've walked into schools as a mentoring support teacher. I travel to a lot of different schools to actually help with their math programs and taking their math programs outdoors. Yeah. So I go visit these schools and, and there's my book right in the front, in the front window. And I'm just, I'm still caught off guard because I think, Oh my gosh, that's, that was mine. I, yeah. <laughs> This world is still so new to me. <laughs> it's amazing, right? And like, I think, um, I don't know if we mentioned, but um, I had another author on, uh, Mike Ulmer. And Mike has his books across Canada in every public awesome, library right? and every public yeah. school. Like 167,000 books sold on Emma's for Maple is the one yeah. book he has. And uh, he just, he said he was at a, like a, at a fireside sitting with his friends and somebody's like, Hey, I have your book on my kitchen table. And he's like, right. And he's like, Oh, well, well, that's nice. He's like, that's great. You know, like it is just, even though he sold so many and he'd been writing for so long, it still felt odd that right. you actually bought my book. Like that's, thank you. That's such a <laughs> great feeling. Right. Yeah. I remember you telling me the story and I found it comical because I love his writing. And yeah. I have a copy of the M is for maple. I have it in my house for my toddlers. And I also have a copy in my classroom. <laughs> Mike Ulmer, if you're listening, yeah. Lauren is saying hello. And um, <laughs> Mike is, uh, Mike is so, he's so fun. And he lives yeah. like a short distance from my house, which I, which is amazing too. But um, I love the author journey. I love the excitement. I love you, you know, you create something and you don't even know where it's going to end up or will it take off? Will people be passionate about it? But you are, oh, and know. it ends up doing things that you would never expect or going places. I had one other author come on from Calgary. Her book is going to the moon. Wow. In the end of this year, it's going to be put on and sent to the moon. So her book is going to be there forever on the moon oh my goodness. and I'm like she's like I and I almost never wrote the book she's like I'm so happy I did right so you just don't know you just don't know just and don't know. and it is exciting it's a little terrifying because I don't know what the end result is going to be yeah. and so it's just sort of having this trust that we're just gonna see what happens it's exciting who knows 
what I have been surprised by is the the amount of requests that I've had for workshops around sit spots and nature routines from um, individual teachers, from schools, and actually from school districts. So I've been quite busy doing, unfortunately, online workshops, but we're starting to get back into in-person workshops, which is so much better. And it, that's been a really exciting perk. I never thought that that part would take off. People are so excited to learn more about outdoor learning. And so, yeah, I'll take you outside. I'll help you figure out what the nature management instead of classroom management. Here's some structures on how to ensure a more successful outing with your learners, how to scaffold those expectations, Mm. uh, especially for learners that have English as a second language or a third language or a fourth language. Yeah. Here's some visuals we can put together to help them connect with nature because it might be new for them. And just that whole sensory piece, getting out of the book, even though we're talking about authors, getting away from the book and actually, like you said, touching the bark of the tree and holding the leaf and, you know, and just experiencing that smelling the marzipan, you know, like that's right. You can't, you can't capture that on a video or anything, right? No, definitely. Yeah. It's been really exciting. And I was a vendor for the first time last week. That's something new. So I had a table at a yoga launch party, this beautiful store. It's not a store. It's a beautiful company. And it was an outdoor event. And it was so exciting to see yoga connecting with SitSpot because it's very similar. It's about Mm -hmm. mindfulness and meditation. And it was a really exciting event I learned so much from the other vendors I I went up to them and I said this is my first one how do I set up a table (laughs) how do I speak to people how do I do I just stand here awkwardly do I talk to everybody that comes by or is that too salesy I mean what works for me and um it was quite comical because my I had to bring my two kids along my husband's away for work and so I actually wasn't at my table for very long I had to chase my kids around outside and (laughs) But it was a wonderful uh, learning experience. And I got to meet some amazing other authors and other artisans. Amazing. Okay, so for the authors that are listening, any tips, any advice, author to author, how would you, what can you let people know? How can you encourage them in their journey to become an author? I love that. I, for me, the biggest help was having a friend going through it at the same time. So she was a few months ahead of me and her name was a childhood friend. We're both teachers. Her name's Kelly Shudo. And she now has a series of children's book, the What Does It Mean series. So her first one was What Does It Mean to Be Brave? And it's all about, we're not comparing our braves. Something that I do might not be brave for you because we're on different, we're on different paths. We're on different learning journeys. And so it's all about accepting and not being comparative. So her, it was her dream to become an author. She learned the ropes. She told me about it right as I was on my mat leave. She helped me figure out how to get my words down on paper, how to find a, an illustrator that I connected with. Yeah. And I think if I didn't have a friend to talk to, I would have felt really lost because I had a million questions. There's so much yeah. to know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yikes. It's but crazy. it's so exciting. Yeah. See, that's that's great. So having somebody somebody slightly ahead of you to kind of look up to and kind of work towards an inspiration, a mentor. Right, a mentor. Yeah, Definitely. for sure. Yeah. Beautiful. That's amazing. So, okay, great success so far. Where are you headed? What's next? Where do you go from here? So I'm really excited because I, I have signed on with a publisher now because the picture book was self-published. Yeah. And now I'm working with a publisher to write a teacher's guide for sit spots. Because again, there's not a lot of information about sit spots specifically for outdoor learning. So this is for um, how to introduce the routine to your learners, how to ask a question for all your learners to go sit and observe. How do you give them a nature journal? What do you expect them to put on paper? How do you take those little questions and turn them into 
big in-depth inquiries outside. So there's a lot of information to help teachers in this book and for families that are keen to be outside with their learners. And uh, I think in the next couple maybe in a year or two, I'm actually going to partner up with Kelly Shudo and we're going to write another book together. So nice. book number two, it'll be under her series, the what does it mean? And we're going to start talking about what does it mean to love nature? Okay, so can you put a little pin in that? Because we definitely want to come back to that. Okay. And I would love to have you and Kelly on together and amazing. talk about the book together. That would be, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the author journey and just listening to the passion and the creativity that you have for your message and how it's going to help kids, and families, and adults just to connect with nature. And, and in, a, in a busy world where we're just go, go, go all the time, we're always on the move to just to be able to sit and reconnect with ourselves and with our surroundings. It's beautiful. It's, it's really, so really powerful. Right? Yeah. The fact that I can close my eyes and I can visually map out my backyard forest trail. I know where the huckleberries are growing right now. And I know where they're <laughs> not growing right now. Because there's an area in that forest where I know the sun can get in and they are fully out. I think I ate about 30 already this morning on my <laughs> little walk. And then the rest of the trail, I know that they're not growing right now. I know the areas where I should avoid because that's where I can see that the bears have their little path through the woods. I usually avoid that area. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I know my backyard forest so well just makes me so unbelievably happy. I, I don't, I can't even put it into words. I just feel lucky. I feel grateful. I have this connection where I now want to look after it. I go out there with extra dog bags so that I'm picking up after other people's dogs mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. may have missed it, hopefully by accident, Yeah, just to make sure that it's a really safe place for, I have toddlers, they're going to walk through that. I don't want yeah. it being brought home. Yeah. And so it's, it's about connecting and looking after the world because it's a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. And to find our place in that world. Right. Right. Yeah. And and then sit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah That's what cool. we need to do, right? We do, right? We need that time to tune out, zone in or zone out while you're sitting there. You can think about something specific. You can think about nothing at all and just see where your mind takes you. So whether you live in the beautiful part of the world where you are, or you live downtown Vancouver in a sky rise on the 50th floor, Exactly. Go down stairs, go for a walk, find your spot and connect. Right. Yeah. Make it, make the effort because the effort is worth it. It is. Right. Yeah, it definitely is. You'll notice, you'll notice such a, a, an improvement in the calmness that you feel. In, 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 it affects everything in your life too. It's not just, you know, it's not just, you know, your, your personal time and all that, but you can feel it. It's going to impact everything that you do. Everything. It, it carries out through the whole day. So I've gone on my quick, quick little 40 minute walk this morning. Yeah. And I feel like I'm still glowing from it. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly from sweat. <laughs> it's a hot day. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I feel very um, free. I feel more energetic. I don't need my second coffee right now. Mm. I'm feeling good to go take on what the rest of the day has to offer. Amazing. Okay. So it's called. The book is called Me and My Sit Spot. Right. It's the name of the book. Um, we will have all the links and everything in the show notes. Lovely. To go find the book and make sure you buy the book. And I think one other thing we talked about in the past was our mutual love for Squamish, BC <sighs> and barbecue. Right. It's the right? best. I love that we live on opposite sides of the country. I know. And we both... <laughs> and we both have this connection with Squamish, BC. It was so random. I was there for one day. I was there 10 hours total. And my <laughs> and the person that met me took me to Squamish and we had barbecue. And I just stood there with the mountains surrounding me going, this is like a movie set. It's just gorgeous. It is. And it's funny because neither of us can remember the name of that restaurant. No, but we both no know it's at the end of the road. We know where it's looking. We can Railway both... tracks are behind exactly. it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 
So if you're the owner of this barbecue spot, you just got free ad. Sorry, we don't know the name of your place. Please respond. But and if you do know this place and you live in Squamish, tell us so we yes. can give them a proper shout out. But yeah, because it's the best. Every time I'm going up to Whistler, mm-hmm. Pemberton to visit friends, that's always the place we stop. Okay, Lauren, you have some homework then. Can you please find out? Because it's just bugging me now. It is bugging me. That is my sit spot in Squamish, right? Absolutely. And it's funny when things are like this on autopilot, you go there, I don't even have to think about turning left and turning right. I know where my parking lot is. I go there on autopilot, but I never look up at the sign. (laughs) How terrible is that? It is amazing food, by the way. It is. And an amazing little town, a little nugget in BC. So definitely go there Mm -hmm. um, right after Port Moody, then Squamish. (laughs) <laughs> um, but uh, so great, Lauren, to have you on the podcast. Well, thank you so much. So wonderful to connect with you and chat about everything to do with outdoor learning. And if you're listening to our podcast right now and you're like, well, this is great, was a great episode, but I want more, Mentoring Nature Connections, your next favorite podcast is right here, right now. Go there, listen to every single episode, like, subscribe, share, follow, do all the great things to help Lauren in her podcast as well. Thank you so much, David. So it's so great to have you on. And please keep in, us in mind for the future. We'd love to have you back again. That would be wonderful. Yes. Okay. Let's see what the future has. Everyone, please go find your sit spot and take the book with you and enjoy it. Because Lauren has something there for you. And appreciate your time, Lauren. Lauren McLean on Living the Next Chapter. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Hey guys, thank you for listening to the podcast. Jump over to livingthenextchapter.com, our website, and you will see a spot where you can leave a voice message. We'd love to hear your feedback. We're trying to make it as easy as possible to hear from you. So if you want your voice on this podcast, yes, that's possible. Go to livingthenextchapter.com, click the little icon, little microphone icon, leave a voice message. We'll insert your message into the podcast. Tell us where you're listening from. Uh, Tell us your favorite guest. Maybe there's a guest we should have on the podcast. Maybe you should be our next guest. Leave us a message. Livingthenextchapter.com Again, thank you so much for listening. Please share this podcast episode with one person. That's all we're asking. Meet you over there at livingthenextchapter.com Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Love to hear from you. Till the next episode. It's coming up right away. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you for being part of Living the Next Chapter. Thank you for supporting our guests. Have a great day.